The technique all-in-one mesh hernioplasty is based on a single pre-shaped mesh that is applied with a newly devised surgical method which is meant to reduce the risk of chronic neuralgic pain and improve the comfort of patients. After performing the groin incision and having opened the external oblique muscle fascia, the spermatic cord is identified. With the diathermocoagulator, a medial longitudinal incision of the fibrocremasteric sheath is carried out. The medial edges of the sheath are identified and lifted with mosquito forceps, and while the assistant is pulling the cord, the complete avulsion of the latter from the sheath is performed. The avulsion is laterally performed until the inguinal ligament with which it shares functional continuity. The fibrocremasteric sheath will be used at the end of the intervention to cover the mesh. By pulling the cord with thumb and forefinger, the bus deference immediately underneath is identified and the so-called cord mesentery is opened. After loading the elements on a Bottini forceps, you continue the resection, abandoning the mesentery released on the fascia transversalis to protect the neurovascular bundle, and so the external spermatic vessels and the genital branch of the genitofemoral nerve. The hernia sac is now released, in this case a direct hernia sac, until the hernia door, and it is then reduced in the abdomen, with reinforcement of the weak area, through application of the fascia transversalis with separate sutures with glycophil lac 2 os The internal inguinal ring is prepared in order to insert the prosthetic ring. We see laterally the external spermatic vessels and the genitofemoral nerve and, beyond the sheath, the groin ileum. A single prosthesis is applied to directly reinforce the rear wall of the inguinal canal, from which the name all-in-one mesh, in order to simultaneously reinforce all the weak areas. The prosthesis consists of a circular ring and the main body connected by an isthmus. One edge has a lower convexity that will be placed on the inguinal ligament and an oblique isthmus that will be medially oriented. The two sections of the prosthetic ring surround the cord elements, forming a conical ring around them. After application of one suture, with glycophil LAC 2 os The shortening of the two prosthetic sections allows to adjust the conical ring to the cord diameter. With two anatomical forceps, the prosthetic cone is introduced into the deep inguinal orifice to reinforce the weak area of the inguinal canal. The isthmus of the prosthesis protrudes from the deep inguinal ring and goes into the main body, which is placed on the inguinal canal floor to reinforce all weak areas of the inguinal canal. A suture in lac glycophil 2 os is applied on the fascia transversalis, delimiting the lower portion of the ring, leaving the isthmus underneath. The size of the isthmus of the prosthesis prevents the corrugation of the main body to the suture tightening. The distal extremity will arrive at the pubic tubercle and in this point it is sutured with the glycophil lac 2 os without including the periosteum. 
Finally, the medial margin of the fibrocremasteric sheath that had previously been prepared is now recovered and placed underneath the cord. By means of a continuous suture to medial aponeurotic muscle fascia with fill block 3 O's, the sheath is applied to cover the prosthetic mesh. Originating from the internal oblique muscle, the cremaster muscle will constitute cranially a sort of tie around the cord to cover the prosthetic mesh until the pubis. Since the prosthesis is covered, there will be no adhesions with the cord. The nerve structures will be on different layers, and so they will not interfere with the prosthesis. After having placed the cord in its usual location, the aponeurosis of the external oblique muscle will be closed with continuous suture with fill block O. The advantages are represented by a relatively simple surgical intervention with a short learning curve. The surgical time is also quite short, 30 minutes on average. Since there is no need for isolating nerve bundles, for preparing a nest for a subaponeurotic mesh, for suturing the prosthesis to the surrounding muscular aponeurotic structures, and for not having to apply any plug to fence in the mesh. Regardless of the type of hernia, all weak areas of the inguinal canal are directly and simultaneously reinforced with the minimum use of prosthetic material and without any risk of interference of the prosthesis with the nervous, muscular and aponeurotic structures. This ensures greater comfort for patients by reducing the risk of chronic neuralgia and foreign body sensations. The closure of the subcutaneous tissue will be performed with glycophil lac 2 os while the skin will be closed with glycophil lac fast 3 os